An orphaned orca calf has been stranded in a lagoon near Zabalos on Vancouver Island for two weeks now. Now, rescue officials say they plan to airlift the young orca to open water. Rescuers say the whale seems healthy and has been looking for prey, but the way out of that water is shallow and hard to navigate. Officials say the calf will be placed in a sling and lifted out by helicopter. It will then be held in a pen as they wait for its pod to get nearby. So the last few weeks have seen a deluge of orca research published, much of it done right here in BC. Our Darius Madavi joins us now to tell us about the world of killer whales. Darius, our province has seen several types of orcas, but perhaps to a more casual eye, they may all seem the same. Explain that a bit. Right. Uh, well, a trained eye can see the differences between, for example, uh, BC's southern resident orcas and transient orcas. I don't have that trained eye, but some people do, uh, because these are more than just different populations. They have different shapes, different sizes, different food sources, different habits, and different patterns on those patches on them, those white patches, uh, which is why scientists classify orcas into ecotypes. Now, if you take a look here, you can see uh, residents, uh, resident whales eat salmon. They have those rounded fins. Uh, the southern ones are in the Salish Sea, and the northern resident whales are found north of Vancouver Island up to Alaska. Then you have the transient whales, or the bigs, uh, the bigs orcas. Mm -hmm. uh, they eat marine mammals like seals or whales. They have a more pointed fin and a wider range, including uh, further away from the coast. Then there's another one that you might be less familiar with, offshore uh, whales that are orcas that eat sharks and large fish. They have a more rounded fin and are further from the coast, but they don't stray too far. And then lastly, we have one uh, potentially new type of orca recently found in a new paper, uh, but they've, they're found much further offshore. They eat mammals, including sperm whales and also turtles, uh, and they have both rounded and pointed fins. So I know that was a lot, but this last group, which researchers say is likely a new population, was discovered thanks to some detailed orca genealogy when UBC master student Josh McInnes was building killer whale family trees from a massive database of images and found 49 images of orcas that didn't seem to fit in anywhere. Here's what his research supervisor and UBC prof Andrew Trites told us. We tend to call it the oceanic population of killer whales. We suspect that they are distant cousins of transient killer whales, but we don't know whether or not they still get together for social events on occasion or whether or not they cut the family lines, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of years ago. Darius, how do we know whether this really is a new population? What will it take? Uh, the key is data. And fortunately, since publishing their paper, Trite says they've gotten a massive influx of images to analyze. But by far the most reliable way to find out where these orcas fit into the family tree, or perhaps the evolutionary tree if we're talking larger time scales, uh, is to test their DNA, which is why McInnes is heading out to the open ocean to try and collect some samples. But this all leads us to another paper that was published recently, which called our whole system for categorizing orcas into question. Right now, every single orca in the world, from Antarctica to BC to the North Atlantic, is considered one species. But should they be? Uh, the paper compared transient and resident killer whales, including the ones right here in BC, which never mate, even though they can often be found in the same areas, like in the Salish Sea. And the paper highlighted other differences, including major ones in their skulls, as discovered by co-author and UBC grad student Carissa Fung. Here's what one expert told us. Modern genetic techniques have shown that these residents and the transients now known as Biggs killer whales probably split from um, a, a single lineage historically or prehistorically two or 300,000 years ago. And so they've been on different evolutionary trajectories for many thousands of years. So some scientists argue the species status ought to change, but will they and if so, when? It's hard to say. I mean, this is really just a first step. Uh, this paper is a formal suggestion that some ecotypes of orca receive species status, specifically the resident and the transient orcas. Uh, from here, the Committee on Taxonomy for the Society for Marine Mam Mammalogy, it's quite a mouthful, uh, let's say they accept the designation uh, once they, they analyze it. Uh, what happens with all the other populations of orcas around the world? Multiple experts told us this could be opening the door to a lot more changes. Maybe down the road, uh, a, a new species will be proposed for this offshore killer whale form as well. But again, the distinctions aren't quite as obvious and as significant as the differences between the, the residents and the big killer whales, which is why that this is a pretty straightforward case to bring forward. And of course, perhaps the biggest question, at least if you ask me, 
what will these new species be called? Uh, the paper did suggest a new name for the resident and transient ecotypes, but those are far from set in stone. And given how many different populations and types of orcas there are out there, the committee may decide to go with a more formalized approach than what was proposed in the paper. But honestly, Dan, whatever they go with, it's going to be hard to top the original uh, Orsinus orca. The current mm -hmm. scientific name for all orcas means whales of the kingdom of the dead. And it doesn't get much better than that. About sums it up. Science and climate specialist Darius Madavi, thanks very much.